I've got a pattern lay here for a blouse and of the pieces that I've got, I've got a back which is to cut on the fold. So I've got the pattern lay here on the fold. So the fabric is folded exactly 50-50. And this piece over here, I've used the selvage as a handy guide to get my straight of grain here. Now I am measuring from this line out to the edge here to make sure that it is straight. So I need two of these, the instructions are cut two, cut one on the fold, I need two of these and because the fabric is non-directional fabric, I've been able to turn this piece, which is the front facing of the blouse, upside down, but following the straight of grain here and measuring out to the edge to make sure that it is straight. Of the back neck facing, I only need one but it's as easy to pop it in here and I can dispose of one of the extra neck facings when I have it cut out. For the sleeve, again, because this blouse um, is being cut on a non-directional calico fabric, I can place the sleeve in upside down here to get the best use from the fabric. I have measured from the straight of grain line here out to the edge and from the straight of grain line here out to the edge. The final piece then is the collar. I need to cut two of these collar pieces and because the straight of grain here is quite short it doesn't really make a lot of sense to measure from the centre collar out to the side so what I did instead is I've used the set square placing the line in the middle of the set square here down along um, the centre and using the end of the set square to verify that the fabric was on the or the pattern piece was on the straight of grain on the fabric are in the other direction like this. Okay, so to cut out the pieces that I have, I have two choices. I can either pin the pattern pieces down onto the fabric using pins and then cut out afterwards. I do find it um, myself a little bit faster to work with chalk to trace out the pieces and then to cut out with a scissors afterwards when I don't have the pattern pieces pinned on. I find that a little bit faster. Okay, so the chalk technique when using chalk to trace out a pattern piece. If you use the chalk, and this is a brand new piece, it's got quite a sharp edge on it. So if you work with the chalk at a 45 degree angle, roughly from the fabric, so not straight up, and not flat but always working at this angle and as you trace if you keep flipping the direction of the chalk over and then after a little while moving to another side of the three-sided chalk and then flipping over regularly essentially you're sharpening the chalk as you go so to demonstrate then starting here so holding down the edge of the fabric so that it doesn't drag so I just flipped the chalk over now I normally prefer to mark everything and then go back to all of the notches that I've got. So flipping the chalk over again. Okay, so then double checking with all of the notches. So I'm going to mark out this notch here and here, this one and this one and this one. Okay, so before I cut all of the pieces out, I need to make sure to mark the ends of the dart. So I've marked a dot here through the hole in the pattern to mark the end of the dart leg here on the back shoulder. So I'm going to put a tailor's tack in. So in order to do a tailor's tack, I've taken a double piece of thread and it's quite long. So I'm going to take a little stitch through the mark that I've made through both layers of the fabric. And then leave a reasonably long leg on the thread and then I'm going to stitch again a second time through that same area and this time I'm going to leave a reasonably long loop but the loop needs to be a little bit shorter than the leg. Okay so for ease of cutting out I have cut the fabric out away from the larger piece that I had and it means I can now move the fabric around much more easily on the table. Okay, so you can see that I've put some pins into the pieces just to hold the layers together. Because I'm cutting on the fold, there's a good chance that the underneath may cut differently to the way that I'm cutting on top. So I'm going to start here. Now you may find it useful as well to place a weight onto the fabric. It can really help um, with holding it steady as you cut. 
find when I'm cutting, it's very useful not to close the blades of the scissors fully because that means I can simply move on to cut the next piece. Now that I have this piece cut out here, I'm just going to demonstrate how to finish off the tailor tack. So I'll take out these pins that are temporarily holding the fabric. So because the legs are longer, if they aren't longer, you can just give them a little pull at this point to make sure that they are longer. So if I open up the two layers and pull to the point where I reach the end of the loop, okay, so it stops automatically there. And then if you cut halfway through, it means that I have a bundle of thread at the base of one of the darts and I have a bundle of threads at the base of the other. Okay, and then before I forget, it's important to cut the notches in. Now with the notches, I find it useful to hold the fabric in my hands, to balance the scissors on my hand and with the notch, I'm aiming for it to be two, three millimeters deep. If you cut the notches too deep, it makes the sewing much harder. Okay, so before you start to sew, it's a really good idea to lay all of your pieces together and acknowledge what pieces you've got and how they're going to go together. Particularly important is with items such as sleeves. You'll have two sleeves and it is so, so easy to end up with two right sleeves. So really good practice is to fold those sleeves in half, making sure when you fold them in half, you'll notice when they're folded here that one side is bigger than the other side so normally the back is bigger and the front is smaller and the back one there had the double notches in it so make sure you've got a right and a left i placed the collar here so the collar has three notches in this case it's got a center back and it has the two shoulder notches there's a single notch up top to help you to line it up but in particular these three notches will align with center back neck and two shoulders and then I also have my two fronts and the back and I've placed the facings in. Now people do find facings very confusing. So I've placed the back neck facing fits in exactly as is and these front facings go around the neck and down the front. So they literally fit in exactly the shape that they are. And just out of curiosity, when I put them together, if I remove the front for a section so that you can only see the facings, then it really shows you exactly how those facings will sew together. 